So there's a water waiting for all of us today, amen? I truly believe that. I'm excited for this word. Uh, one of the things that God was speaking to me in my prayer time was that this, his word today can move mountains, but first he's going to move dirt. And I think that's so important that we realize. And, 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 and folks, I just wanted to be obedient to what God wanted to happen there. And I think there's some things that needed to happen in all of our hearts to, to get to where we need so that seed can take root in good soil today. And I, I think that's so important that, that we're obedient. And, and we're going to speak a little bit about that today. And as God is teaching me, obviously, in the middle of a sermon, um, to be obedient to what he's saying. So amen. Very excited to share with you all today. I would say that we could look up here and say that it would be easy to decide which to pour into. I mean, if, if I just kind of move this over, it would probably be pretty evident that we should water these, right? I mean, they look pretty good. But the last month and a half, I've been caring for these two. Yeah, there's, there's seed in there. I mean, you may not believe that, but there's seed in there. The last month and a half, and now, now this one, it's just got uh, some weeds and rocks, and I see that someone put uh, a fishing lure and a little pony in here between, between messages, so there's some junk in there, okay? Uh, so, and, and, and that's often our lives, right? There's some junk in our lives that we'd love for the Lord to remove, and I believe that today he will remove those things. This one here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little shoot right here, Okay? And the root of this plant is actually much bigger than what you see on the surface. And I think that sometimes in our life we get in situations where we would rather see what's on the end of the table than what's right here. As we come into, the, in, into this church today and say, God, I want to see some blooming, some prosperous things in my life. But all the fields of my heart and the situations I'm in are kind of dirty, are not real good. It doesn't seem like there's much growing there. And I'm telling you that no matter what season you're in, obeying God will bring a harvest. No matter what season you're in, I don't care if you've lost your job and things don't look very hopeful or you're dealing with marriage trouble or, or, or you're, you've been praying for a kid that's lost and you just wish that they would come back into the sheepfold of God and you just, you just see this is what you see. I'm saying continue to be persistent in the things of God. Continue to be obedient and watch him provide the increase. We're in a two-week series called Dirt. Today's message is entitled Something Worth Watering. I want to I start with a passage of Scripture. I think, you know, as uh, the morning prayer team here has been starting with a time of confession and then uh, the Scripture reading, I think there's something that we, we, we need to, before we would offer anything to say, we should offer the words of God. Uh, and, and in a Ho Hosea chapter 10, 10, verse 12, it says this. I say, plant good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard grounds of your heart. In other versions, it says the fallow ground, the, fa the, the ground that has not been touched. For now is the time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. I think Hosea kind of got a, the cart ahead of the horse here when he says this. Now, understand in the, in the book of Hosea, the book is about God's love for sinful people. And Hosea's name actually means salvation. And, and, and I couldn't help as we were singing and stuff but to realize the beautiful picture that this paints of, of, of the salvation that we have in Christ. That, that something had to die and go into the ground so that it may come forth new life. Something living. And I think, you know, we, we miss the simple message of the gospel in such small things sometimes. But as I was standing there worshiping, I just see that. That, that, that Jesus had to die. And because of his love and that, that he loves us, man, that, that's, that's God looking at your life and saying, I know you don't see much, but I do. And you're something worth watering. There's something there that is yet to shoot out of the soil that I want to water, that I want to grow. Would you just continue to be persistent in the things of God? Our thesis this morning, as I, like I said, I want to kind of slow down with what Hosea is saying in this passage because understand when he's speaking of this, he says plant good seeds immediately. That's what he says. So I think he's envisioning 
already plowed fields. And I'm saying there are fields in our life that are yet to be plowed. So let's kind of start through this in a practical way that, that, that we can walk in a progression to matter no, no matter what field or what our heart or what our life looks like, we would be obedient to God that somewhere along the line he would water this, 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 and this. And when he wants the, the increase to come, he will allow it to come. Here's our thesis. Welcome God's hello in your life. Expose the ground, seek the Lord, plow the ground, and plant good seed, sow seed, so that he may shower your life with righteousness. Your life is something worth watering. The first thing that has to happen when we expose the ground, we have to welcome God's hello. And welcoming God's hello is receiving salvation. It's saying, you know, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I've never had this conversation with you. But because I've had this conversation with you to say, Jesus, you are Lord. Man, I'm, I'm, gaining, I'm gaining all these things in Christ. And now a relationship that didn't exist now exists. It's said so beautifully in, in, in Ephesians chapter 3. In talking about the love of Christ. When we accept him and we gain access to, the, to, to our God. It says this. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand all God's, that all God's people should. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made completely with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Man, there's something about welcoming God's hello in your life. Exposing ground. You know, I think about that in, in, in our lives. When we say yes to Jesus, there are things in our life that gain his sunlight, that gain his rain, that gain his, his testing, his grooming. I mean, I think about that because I, I, I see farmers all the time. When they care for their soil, they do lots of things, right? They remove things that need to come out of the soil. They, they, they test the soil with a pH test, and they do all these different things. And what I'm saying is, is God, once you welcome him into your life and say, Lord, I want to make you Lord and Savior of my life, there may be some things in your life that you can't remove that God can. There may, may be some rocks. You know, I, I know this one, when I, when I pulled the soil for this one, I noticed that there was a couple rocks. I know, who knows what else is in here? But there's weeds and all other things. And, and what I'm saying is, is there are things in your life that you're going to say, I, they're no longer a part of my life, and I don't know how, but I'm saying God is the how. He's the reason that they're no longer there. There, there may be some boulders that are underneath the surface of your life, but when you welcome God's hello, it's what it says right here in the Scripture, that his love, we can't fully understand how deep, how wide, how long. It, it, it comes into your life, and he says, you know, because I love you so much, I kind of want to gain a little more depth of relationship with you. So there's some things that are blocking your vision right now that I'd like to get out of the soil. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I love you, because I died for you, because my blood is sufficient to come upon you, that my grace would be sufficient for you. And it's a beautiful thing because there are things in our lives that we can't do anything to remove, but he does. He has the power to do so. You know, I think oftentimes it can be awesome to think about these things and, 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 and be hopeful when it looks like something like this is happening. Last night I'm praying upstairs in my, in, in my office. There's a, uh, it's, it, we have a little like nook area between uh, two bedrooms, and one of the bedrooms right now is a nursery. As you know, me and my wife are expecting our first child. Who knows? Any, any time now. Yeah, any day. So... I'm praying, and I'm praying, and I'm worshiping, and I, 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 hit, the, I hit the door frame of the, uh, of the nursery, and I'm like, this is just a room, God. This is just a room, but you've called me to pray over it. And I, I, I continue to pray, and, 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 and honestly, folks, that room right now, I mean, it has some roots. It's got some sprouts in it. It's got some little things going on. But here's the thing. It's yet to be this. And, 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 and when that child comes, it will be that. But it's not going to just be that. Because at some point, 
that, that's fun, but that doesn't always bring happiness. Just because you've brought a child into the world. Now, now it's who's changing diapers, and now who, who's going to feed the baby? She's hungry, and now there's some weeds that are, that are growing in my life. And, I, and I'm trying to figure out, all right, how do I do this, God? What do you want me to do? You know, and, and, and then for, for a season, now we're saying, God, we can't, but you can. So help us out here, Lord. We, want, we, we, we love the green pastures, but we'll trust the season wh- that we're in. We'll keep, continue to be persistent and obedient to you, even though there may be weeds growing right now, God. We know that you're doing a faithful work inside of us. And that's what I'm saying as you're, as you're sitting here this morning. God is wanting to do a faithful work inside of you because of your obedience. So when we sing, send your rain, allow it to come in my life, man, there is hope that as you're singing, there's something going on in your heart. There's something about praising God and worshiping and lifting his name on high that breaks down things that can't be broken down. The enemy is being removed from your life as you lift the Lord on high. And as you lift him on high, as you lift him on high, he's saying, I see you. I see you, and I want to water you. I know you are in a rough season right now, but I'm still watering. Don't despise your small beginnings. Don't despise your small beginnings because I'm still at work, and I'm still God. I haven't left my throne. But would you welcome his hello? That he would remove things. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Folks, I, I, I've had a strong conviction to share this with you. That I think there's a lot of times we come in here and we take communion looking for an experience from the bread and from the juice. And God is saying, if you would know me, if you would know me, the juice and the bread would be the sacrament that it needs to be. Let me me say it like this. If my wife wrote me a love letter and I gave it to you, it would mean nothing to you. But because I have a relationship with her, it means something to me. So what I'm saying is, is when you come and call on the name of Jesus, and you gain a relationship with him, when you go to take the sacraments, you now have a pre-existing relationship. So when God writes his love letter to you and you take his sacraments, they represent in your life what they should represent. Man, don't go looking for a sign in these things. When God said, I've been here the whole time. I'm just waiting for you to say yes to me. Welcome me into your life. He will remove things that you can't remove yourself. So as this relationship develops, and I've welcomed his hello, there's some things that have to be plowed. There's some ground that has to be broken up. There's some moves that have to be made. And one of the things that I'm finding in my life, so like let me, let me just be honest with you and real with you for a minute. This week was terrible. It just was. It just, it was bad. I mean, my, my, I, so like I have a small yard, right? I started cutting grass at 1030 in the morning. I finished at 530 in the evening. My yard is not that big. The, stuff doesn't want to work. The dishwasher breaks and you know, this is that. And it's just like, Lord, I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying here, Lord. I'm trying to do what you want me to do. I'm trying. But, but, but oftentimes we, we say, Lord, I want to see this. I want to see this, God. And most of life is not like that. But what is happening to me is is as I work through life, God, through situations, is bringing about areas of my heart that are unplowed. Things that have yet to be cared for. Oh, you're mad at that lawnmower? You got some anger issues you need to deal with. Oh, you're struggling with that? Mm, You got some anxiety issues. You see what I'm saying? And so as I I go deeper with God, I'm saying, Lord, help me plow up this ground. I'm trying to seek you. I'm dealing with some hard things. I think it was Tuesday this week. I'm sitting right here. I had my head leaning against this, and I was aimed that way, and I was bawling like a baby. And I'm just calling out on God. I'm like, Lord, I need you. I, 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 I'm struggling. And I turn towards the altar. And uh, I, I said, Lord, I could, just, I could just use your touch right now. I could just use your touch. 
And in my mind, he was going to lay his hand on me while I was here. And I kept waiting for it. I kept waiting for it. I kept wanting to see this. Show me the sign, God. And he was saying to me, I've just broken the ground. There's some things that have been rooted in the soil that have yet to come to the surface. So would you just continue to trust in me? And my answer to him was, God, even if you don't touch me, you're still enough. I still love you. Even if you don't, even if you don't choose to do that, I know that you, who, you are who you say you are. So I'm going to continue to lean in. But I said, Lord, I just want to feel your touch. And this is how awesome our God is, guys. This is how awesome he is. Thursday evening, I'm at Chestnut Mountain Ranch, and they have three boys that are, that are leaving one of their homes. They're graduating. So I began to give these three boys a pep talk before they went to bed, and they were having their last day to leave the ranch. And was talking to them about, you know, you, you guys are no longer a slave to sin. You don't have to choose these things anymore. Choose to live for Christ. Even in some of, of what I'm saying to you now, no matter what life's fields look like, no matter the hardships that you'll deal with in your heart, continue to pursue God, continue to be obedient to him. And then I said, let me pray for you guys. So I prayed for all three of them individually. And as soon as I was done with that, they said, now we're going to pray for you. And everyone that was sitting around that table came around, and every single hand in the room went on my back. And God said, I sent more than my hands. That's what I heard him say. And I immediately started crying because, he, you know, we, we, he, we say, well, just give me this. And he says, no, I'm going to give you better than that. I'm going to do better than that. You continue to be obedient, continue to be per persistent in the things that I'm asking you to do. And not only will I touch you with my hand, but I'll send the flowers of the field to touch you too. And folks, I, I hope that you hear this not, not saying, well, he hears from God and I don't. No, I'm saying we can all hear from God. We all have the opportunity to gain relationship with Christ, allow him to plow up the grounds, the, the, the hard places of our heart. And most importantly, in, in the plowing, one of the great things that happened is, is he provides the growth. And it says this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's not important who does the planting or do, who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. Man, like, I, like I, I try to understand that. I mean, I try to understand how someone puts the seed in the ground, someone else waters, but then when you come back the next day, there's something there that you didn't do or the person that the water didn't do, but only God can do. And that's what I'm saying. There's some things in your life that only God can do. One of the sentences that I've taken away from this message this week is if, if we would do what we knew, we would grow. If we would do what we knew, we would grow. But a lot of times when we're looking at fields that aren't plowed up or we're looking at something that is yet to sprout up, it's very difficult to continue to do what you know to do. But if we would do what we knew to do, we would grow. And it's very difficult to continue to, to, to do these things. And, it, and it's hard. It's hard. And it's difficult. But one of the things is as we continue to do, and I, I can hear it already. See, when I, when I say that sentence, do what I know to do, you would grow. Somebody's saying, but how? But how? How do I grow? You're saying do what, I'm, what I know to do. Well, I don't really know how. And I'm saying to you, you don't have to know how. You just have to know who. You don't have to know how. You just have to know who. And the who is Jesus Christ. Because just as he can make something grow and we don't know how, we still know that he's the who. All we got to do is continue to move towards him, continue to move towards God and, 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 and believe in the who. And, and, and guys, we have to sow seed, continue to sow seed, continue to plow up the ground, continue to ask God to move in our lives as, as we seek him, we're sowing seed with one hand and plowing ground with the other, saying, God, I'm broken here. Help me, help me move, move in a way that I'm going towards you. And as I'm going towards you, I'm going to continue to sow seed. I'm going to continue to seek you and say, Lord, 
I don't know what to do here, but I know you. I mean, that's the thing. As we were standing there, as we were standing there worshiping, I mean, do any of us really know how to worship? I mean, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just standing there singing to God, I, but I know who. You know, and, and when I pray over here with people, I'm, I, I'm just trying to pray what he wants me to pray over your life. It doesn't mean that it's right or it's wrong. I just know the who. And there are things that we walk to, into in our lives that we just have to trust and know that God is who he says he is. We don't have to know the how. We just have to know the who. You know, one of the things that's so important in these seasons that, that we face when, we, when we're dealing with fields like this, it doesn't seem like there's, there's much going on. God's word said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, don't grow weary in doing good. At the proper time, you will do what? You will reap a harvest. If your field or your life looks like this right now, I promise you, I'm going to take a picture and have them post this here in a couple weeks. There's going to be something going on right here. Don't grow weary in doing the good things, the small things, the mundane things. For at the right time, you will reap a harvest, an increase that only he can provide. We have to be persistent in our prayers. You know, one of the things I think about is that our job is obedience. His is outcome. Our job is obedience and his is outcome. We just continue to obey and abide and trust and move towards God in all things. And he provides the increase. He provides the outcome. He allows things to grow. And you know, the, the thing about our, our obedience to God, it's evidence of our faith. Our obedience to God is the evidence of our faith. It's choosing God over the world. It's saying, you're going that way, but I'm going this way. God has called me to live this way, and I'm going to go the way that he's called me to live. And folks, I think when we hear the word obedience, we immediately think of checklist or something that I have to live out in the Levitical law or something that I have to keep. I'm saying to you, no, it's because of what he did that you choose to live for him. Because he died on the cross so that you could live. That's a, that's, a, that's a love worth having a relationship with. That's someone worth pursuing. It's not that I'm keeping a checklist of what I'm doing and not doing. It's that I'm moving towards God and his love because he has loved me so much that he died for me that I may have life. It's important to understand that our obedience is the something worth watering. When you hear that song, we sing it here in a minute. That, that, that shower that's coming down. It's not that God's not going to water your life, whether or not you're obedient or not. Now, he loves you so much that he's going to water your life regardless. But when we obey him, man, we get a whole new view. And we see what he's doing. We see what's coming. No matter if it's weeds and, and rocks and dirt and, and something that still needs worked with or something that has just taken root, or something that's in a season of harvest. Because I've, I've been obedient, I've abided in Christ, I can see it. Obedience is the something worth watering. The Bible really speaks to this in, in uh, Romans chapter 6 about the importance of obedience. And it says this, don't you realize that you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey? What are you choosing to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Is your obedience leading towards living, or is your obedience leading towards death? Because whatever we're choosing to obey, we're either headed towards life or death. There's no, there's no in between there. It only speaks of two things. And it says this as it continues in Matthew. It says this in chapter 7. Not everyone that calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. In other versions where it says only there, it actually says but. But those that do the will of the Father. And I, and I hope that's hopeful for you that, that you're not afraid of this verse that says, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter, but those that have chosen to obey and do the will of the Father can call heaven their home. It's those that do my will. But Lord, when did we ever see you thirsty or naked 
When were you ever hungry? When you cared for the least of these, you did it for me. Is your current obedience something worth watering? Galatians chapter 3, verse 29 says this in talking about our lives. And I, I love this. And, and this is a little bit of a turn of what we're talking about. But it talks about that love and, and the fact that if you belong to Christ and you've chosen to live for him, not only is your life something worth watering, but when you said yes to Jesus, you are, you are seed. You are Abraham's seed. Your life is seed. It's not something that's contained to these pots. It's something that moves and has its being and has its way and it can, it can go places and sow seed in other people's lives and do the work that it's came to accomplish, the purpose that God has set for your life. And I think it's so important that we understand that our lives are seed. And as we choose to obey, man, how clear that comes, that the direction of our seed is hitting the soil that it needs to hit. The obedience is something worth watering. You are a seed. I want to share with you a story as we close. I asked, uh, there's a family here, um, and the, uh, the, 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 the lady, um, I asked her, I said a couple weeks ago, she was telling me a dream or a vision she had, and I said, can I share that? She said, yeah, that's fine. And as she began to tell me this vision or this dream that she had, God began to speak into my heart something that he was preparing for today. But what she was telling me was that she was having this dream. And she said she found herself in the middle of a field, a, a massive field. And she was there by herself. And she said it was hot and there's nothing around. And she said she begins to walk and she had a cup in her hand. And she said as she walked, she could realize that in the middle of the field, there was one of those old pumping wells. You know, the ones you could walk up to and actually crank water out of. She said there was one right in the middle of this field. And she said as she approached it, she realized that she needed something to drink. And she said she began to try to pump the well, and all that was ever coming out was dirty, mucky water, just nastiness. And she said in the middle of trying to figure this thing out, a man pulls up in a truck. And the man pulls so close to the pump that she can no longer keep pumping the well. And she said she stops what she's doing, and the man gets out, comes around and says, here, let me do it. And she held her cup, and the man began to pump. And all that came out was the purest of water that she had ever seen. And I said, you realize that that man was Jesus, right? She just kind of smiled. Folks, that's what I'm saying. Your life is seed. And there is soil that has to be broken up so that that seed can take root. But what I'm saying is God sees your life as something worth watering. And no matter what you're going through, all you have to do is bring your cup. Bring, bring the soil, bring, bring it all. Bring it all to him and just let him pump into your well. Let him pump into your cup. It's not that, that, that it has to be contained to this, but he's just saying, bring your life and let me pump into it. And all, folks, all I could imagine is that when she started allowing God to pump in, into that well, she told me this morning, as Jesus was about to pump the water, she woke up. And all I could stop, couldn't quit thinking about it, the last message, the last sermon was that, there's this field that she was once in, but once God had started to pump into her life, that that field became a field of living wildflowers. And people were just coming to get what they needed from God to allow them to, him to pour into their life. And as he poured in, there was wildflowers shooting up, representing all different people's life, because we all have a part. We all have a purpose. And as somebody else drove by, they said, would you look at that? I've just seen God. I've just seen the representation of Christ. And I can only imagine when we were standing here singing today that someone drove by and said, would you look at that? A room full of wildflowers and something glowing over this church. 
Would you bring him the dirt of your life? Bring him the soil that needs to be turned over and broken up. He sees your life as something worth watering regardless of what it looks like. Keep being persistent and obedient because obedience is something worth watering. Let God shower righteousness upon you. Welcome his hello today. Do what we know to do. Know the who. And allow him to water your obedience. Let me pray for you. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for today, Lord. And God, we just ask right now, uh, Lord, we have not done what, uh, uh, we have not done anything out of order today, God. You've called us to continue to praise your name. You, you called us to not, not, uh, not experience you, but Lord, but live in your presence. To be in the moment with you, God. To allow you to break up the ground. Lord, that we would be obedient to you because you see that as something worth watering, God. And even when we aren't, you see our lives as something worth watering regardless of our obedience. But God, we see you so much more Clearly, when we choose to obey. Father, bless this response time. I pray right now, Lord, Holy Spirit, come. As we sing, there's a cloud, receive this rain. I believe, Lord, that there has been hearts prepared, soil turned over to receive the watering that you have sowed seed uh, with today, God, that you have changed hearts. So, Lord, we wait on your reign, and we, we are excited to see what you're going to do in our lives during this response time. Father, I pray this as I, I finish. God, I pray that uh, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart have been pleasing in your sight today. Mm. just want to please you, God. just want to obey you. just want to do what you've called me to do. God, we, we give this time to you. In Jesus' name. Mm. You know, God, it's, it's interesting. As I stand behind this table with these four folks that I love very much in front of me, all I can think about is the cross. I'm going to try not to cry, God. But that sign of oppression, that sign of violence, and even as I'm saying the word sign, Lord God, you're, you're checking my spirit and say, don't say it's a sign, Kevin. It was an instrument of oppression. It was an instrument of violence. But son, that instrument of oppression and that instrument of violence has been a sign of freedom from the time I came up out of the grave. And God, I think of the people that we know. And I look, God, I, I've, I've never been to San Francisco, never been there. Walked through Chicago one evening. Been to New York City maybe a day or two. But I've lived in Westover my whole life. And I think about all the oppression that I've seen on this side of the river. And people have used power, and position, money as instruments for oppression one school over another school but Jesus you just keep saying no 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 look to my cross because it is a sign of freedom and God for the people who have been in bondage because of poverty and the people who have been in bondage because of pigmentation. And the people 
And you just spoke this one to me, God. The people who have been in bondage because of wealth. I pray today that each of those people will see that you're working on them too. And it's not because you hate them. It's because you love them. And you're saying to them, I want you to say one sentence. Jesus is my Lord. And Jesus, I thank you that you went to that sign of freedom and stretched out your arms and lifted up your head and your voice and said, Father, forgive them. They don't even realize what they're doing. And you said, I'm giving my life into your hands, God, because this great work of freedom is accomplished. And so in this beautiful sacrifice of a meal, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you gave your body. And I thank you that you said to everybody, everybody that makes declaration that Jesus is my Lord, that this is your body that you've given to them. And you've said, I want you to take this. And I want you to eat from it. All of you. Mm. And I want you to do so in remembrance of me. And that scripture that's spoken at the beginning of the collection of books and at the end of the collection of books that says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. I thank you, Jesus, that you said, this is the blood of the new covenant. It's my blood, and I am pouring it out for you. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to lead you out of the place of death into the place of life. And my brothers and my sisters, it is not a place of life. It is the person of life. And I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you that our Father would make us one just as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. Let me wash you with my blood that there would be remission of your sins. So you take this and you drink this in remembrance of me. And in the eating and in the drinking, as you have declared with your lips, believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In your eating and in your drinking, you will shout to the heavenlies. You will shout to every human in this world. You will say to the rocks and the trees, Jesus is my Lord. Praise to your name, God. Praise to your holy name. I know on this day of Mother's Day, we have some new people here today. They've left their local assemblies and come with their mom. Or maybe some moms have come with their kids. And I pray, Lord God, if this isn't their tradition to have Holy Communion every Sunday, that they will rise, though. And with us as one people, your family, Lord God, declare Jesus as Lord and come and receive this blessed meal. So as these who are about to serve this beautiful gift of grace go, I know, Holy Spirit, that you're preparing hearts. You've done an amazing work here today, God. Just keep working. Keep working. And I look forward to people's response. We love you, Lord. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Well, if this is your first day or second day or third day at Kingdom. Maybe you're not familiar with what we do during this time. I'm an old Appalachian at heart, so I believe in altar calls, but I don't think you should just come and kneel. We offer the gift, the beautiful gift of grace that is Holy Communion every week. If you say in your heart, in your mouth, that Jesus is my Lord, come and receive. If you'd like to light a candle or put a burden on the cross, please come. If you'd like to kneel and pray by yourself, please come.
Daniel and Don are over here. Jonna, they'll pray with you. If you need prayer, come over and be anointed and prayed for. If you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to stand, you can stand. Kingdom is a place that is not ruled by a bulletin. We are ruled by the Holy Spirit. So as the Spirit moves, you respond. Praise be to our God. Please come.